listen, Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Joe, the blood and guts on the front porch look disgusting. Great job! Thank you, honey, and I've actually saved my most traumatizing work for right here in this living room, because underneath those sheets, I am building the most blood-curdling, terrifying mechanical monster this neighborhood, no, actually all of Northeast Toledo has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Is this about those kids last year that looked at your decorations and went, yo, check out the douche lantern I don't care what those kids think, all right? And after they see what's under there, this year, they'll be peeing in their pants. Oh, good. That's just what the front porch is missing, the pungent set of fear pee. <laughs> so when are you going to unveil this super scary creation of yours? Yeah, don't, don't say it like that. Say what? Like what? Yeah, uh, super scary. Like, <laughs> you just put quotes around it. Like, you don't think I can actually scare people. Oh, look, I know you can scare people, okay? I've seen you talk to smokers in restaurants. <laughs> so, uh, when do I get to look under that? All right, okay. Stand over here. Ready? Meet. Scary Larry, huh? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Prepare to be terrified. I'm going to... What? You're gonna what? Yeah, you're right, Joe. The suspense is terrifying. I'm gonna hack you to bits. The, 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 the hatchet's supposed to go up and then swoosh down. Batteries must be dead. Well, maybe next time you should get undead batteries. You like that doorbell, don't you? I love the doorbell! <laughs> Dr. Radler. Hello, Mel. Uh, Joe, this is Dr. Radler, my gynecologist, who's here at our house for some reason. Nice to meet you. Yeah, same here. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mind the hatchet. I'm actually just holding it for a friend. <laughs> so, why the house call? Yeah. Is, uh, Mel okay? Oh, yes. It's nothing to worry about. It's not a professional call. Just a little catch-up between women. Just because I've seen your cervix doesn't mean we can't be friends. Just to be clear, I don't need to see your cervix in order to be friends. I'm gonna get out of here before this conversation gets weird. That's too late, though. Mel, it's time you knew. I'm not a real gynecologist. What? Wait, 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 wait. So that wasn't actually an IUD? That's not important. I beg to differ! I've been watching over you in various guises ever since you were a teenager. But now it's time you knew the truth. Mel Burke, you are a great and powerful witch. <laughs> Me? I guess you're stuck with me. I'm a witch, like a witch witch, like a uh, cackle cackle riding on a broomstick, warts on the nose. Well, nowadays, most witches have wart reduction surgery, but yes, you are a powerful witch. The adventures of your youth are retold time and time again, mostly on Saturday afternoons. Oh, I get it. This is some kind of Halloween prank. Mel, this is no prank. As a teenage girl, you grew up in the witch world, the other realm. You grew up under my care. I'm a witch, too. I'm 300 years old. Well, you look fantastic. I moisturize. But let's not talk about how beautiful I am. Years ago, a dark force infiltrated our world. For your own safety, we erased your memories and placed you here in unassuming Toledo, Ohio, under the identity of Mel Burke, an average Midwestern woman. Average? Have you seen me run downstairs in heels? I'm amazing. <laughs> but now you and your powers are needed, for evil has overtaken the other realm. The Dark Lord has risen and chaos reigns! <laughs> Dr. Rattler, honey. You know, I know sometimes doctors like to get into the free prescription samples and go a little poopy crazy pants, so, um... What do you say we call 911 and check you into rehab or get you on a reality show or something? Does this look cuckoo crazy pants to you? No, this sparkly cell phone makes your whole story believable. We don't have much time. Everything you need is in here. In this cell phone? It's a spell phone. Use this app to open the ebook of incantations. <laughs> Read it thoroughly, for it could save your very life. Mel? Uh... I'm not gonna ask how on earth you keep going through so many C batteries. But uh, when you use the last one, can you please put it on the shopping list so we know to get more? 
Joe, I'm kind of dealing with a very important house call here. Sorry for the interruption, Dr. Rella. Where did she go? Dr. Rella was just here. She's not here now. She just told me the most bizarre thing. Apparently, I'm a witch and I'm needed to save the other realm. A witch, huh? Mm -hmm. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Oh, you know, she didn't say. Yeah, well, I hope you're a bad, bad witch. <laughs> Where'd you get the new cell phone? Dr. Radler gave it to me. It's a book of spells, apparently. You know, you might want to look around for a new gynecologist. <laughs> look, honey, I gotta go to the store. I gotta pick up some more batteries. Get Scary Larry working here before the kids start to trick or treat. You need anything? Uh, better candy than you usually get? Raisins are nature's candy. <laughs> and that's why people throw nature's eggs at our door. Hello, Mel. Are you ready to cast a spell? Wow, Dr. Radler went all out. Okay, I get to play along with the doctor's joke. Um, levitate the couch. Your spell will not be successful without the proper intention and gesture. Oh, jeez. Okay, levitate couch. <laughs> gesture, poor. Intention level, weak. Oh, maybe I'm getting a bad signal. This might be a lousy witch coverage area. Oh, yeah, I've only got two brooms. Ooh. Uh, Ryder, nice costume. You're rocking Halloween old school, peanut style. Where are you two headed? Ooh. Ryder said he's not speaking until after he gets back from this party we're going to. He's very committed to his character. Ooh. That is so sweet. Wait a second. Were those my thousand thread count sheets? You know what? He is going to be a ghost when he gets home. So, what do you think of my costume? Oh, yeah, it's great. What are you? You can't tell? Uh, don't give me the eyebrow. Okay, I'm really trying here. Um, oh, I got it. You're a rat princess. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a sexy cat. Oh, now I see it. No, you don't. Ugh, stupid cheap mail order costume. It's not sexy, and it's barely a cat. No, oh, honey, you look very nice. I do not. You don't really care, do you? Of course I care, sweetheart. I care a great deal. I mean, I want you to be the most realistic cat there ever was. Oh, my God, what did you do to me? I don't know. I'm due. I'm due. Control Z. How did this happen? How the hell did you turn me into a cat? I don't know. Apparently, I had the proper intention and gesture. What are you, some kind of magician? No, I'm a... a witch. <laughs> then do whatever that was again and change me back right now. I have a party to go to tonight. All right, don't worry, okay? I'm gonna change you back. Oh, you're so soft. <laughs> uh, okay, I just have to find the right spell to transform you. Oh, no. I have to go to the bathroom. What? No, 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 we don't have a litter box. Then let me outside. Well, Okay, fine, but don't run off. We don't know if you're fixed, and I don't want to find out when you're popping out kittens in my closet. <laughs> oh, this is humiliating. Okay. I promise, no matter what you fall off of or how well you play piano, I will not post it on YouTube. <laughs> oh! Now, do you believe me? Yes, I believe you. I'm a witch from the far side. The other realm. Whatever. <laughs> Look, now I just need to know how to turn Lennox back into a person. You can't. You won't have your full powers until you defeat the Dark Lord. Well, how do I do that? I don't know. Well, where is he? I don't know. You know, you're really not bringing a whole lot to the party here, lady. The Dark Lord has overtaken the Witch Realm and is now poised to conquer the mortal world as well. He wishes to destroy you because you are the only obstacle to his supremacy. I feel his presence is near. Wait, what? What, the Dark Lord's coming here? What does he look like? He takes many forms and guises. So he's like the Meryl Streep of evil? He once was Meryl Streep. You know, I bet it wasn't Mamma Mia. Oh, I'm back. In a minute. Look, Dr. Radler. Uh, wish he stopped doing that. Oh, Joe, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, you want to hear something weird? You know, when I got home, there was some stray black cat taking a pee on the front lawn? Yeah. I chased it off, but it was really weird. Before it left, it looked at me just like this. I swear I've seen that look somewhere before. I just can't place it. That was Lennox. I'm a witch, and I turned Lennox into a cat by accident. Ooh. <sighs> spooky. Someone's in the Halloween spirit. I like that. I don't blame you for not believing me. I barely believe it myself. 
Hey, listen, honey, I'd love to chat with you, but I gotta get Scary Larry up and working because the kids are already outside trick-or-treating, okay? And Val, let me in! Keep your fur on, Lennox! <laughs> Run, kids! Save yourself! There's a crazed killer on the loose! I'm going to hack you to bits! <laughs> That's lame. That's not lame. You were scared. You know it. Nah. Fine. Whatever. Here, take your Halloween candy and go. Black licorice? Gross. You have to play seven steps for this? Hey, it's classic Halloween candy. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, I'm not even doing that. That's weird, how's he, how's he doing that? Run, kids, save yourself! I miss this? No way! Oh, what's going on? I don't, I don't, I don't know, it's Scary Larry, it's like he's possessed or something. Oh, it's the Dark Lord, he's come over to this world to get me! It's not always about you, Mel. Hey, you're a witch, right? Why don't you do something? Cast a little spell. All right, don't freak out, don't freak out. Uh, uh, Zither, Zoroastrian, zombies. Oh, here's something. Maka laka hai laka hiney ho. <laughs> Fail. You know, tell all your friends we have black licorice. That was amazing! Oh, I defeated the Dark Lord! You? Uh, I was the one with the lethal licorice. Yeah, you, me, same difference. The important thing is, he's gone. Yeah, you're right. And now, it's time to take out the trash. Oh, wait a minute, I can do better than that. Hold on. Okay, you ready? Here it is. It's trash night. <laughs> and I'm taking it out. Wait a minute, I can do better. Okay, I can just do better. get rid of it. I have to go find Lennox. Lennox! Here, Nisi, 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 Nisi! <sighs> Must kill. Must destroy witch. Must avoid personal pronouns. <laughs> Lennox, this is you, right? Yes, and put me down. You're squishing like five of my boobs. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay, let's try to change you back. Ugh, you're putting me on the counter where we put food? Do you know where I've been? Oh, stop complaining. I'm trying to figure out how to turn you back to your regular self. Okay, restore Lennox to her human form. Sorry, you have Spellbook. Right, you need to upgrade to the full version to use that spell. Hurry up, Aunt Mel. The party already started, and I've got to do my hair. Excuse me. I've just been busy, you know, trying to protect all of humanity from the Dark Lord. Who's the Dark Lord? Evil personified, the devil incarnate, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I'm just going to do this the old-fashioned way and hope I'm not violating any copyright laws. Bippity-boppity-boo. You, um, might want to do a little waxing before you go out. <gasps> oh, no! What did you do to me? Uh, uh, this doesn't come off. I'm like half cat, half human mutant. Oh, thanks a lot, it, Mel. Hey, well, where are you going? I'm going to do some stress eating. <laughs> oh, butter. <laughs> what are you upset about? I'm the one who can't turn my niece back. Look at her. I know, right? <laughs> oh, more trick-or-treaters. Lennox, will you get the door? How? I don't have opposable thumbs. You're a talking cat. Figure it out. Must have victory. Oh, tell me about it. Uh, you want a glass of wine? I think we deserve it after killing that Dark Lord. Dark Lord stands before you. In searching for Teenage Witch season after season, must destroy. Aha! 
Dark Lord is not a vampire. That's for vampires, too. Those are scallions, anyway. Really? Are you sure? My maple cabinets. Those are custom. That's it, bitch. Get out of my van. We're getting a lot of complaints about the Black Lake Race. Must destroy witch. Lennox, it's a Dark Lord. <sighs> Where? Inside Joe. Oh, no, well, well, can't you just, like, use a spell or something? No, my powers don't work on him. Um, oh! But there's a magic you've had that's always been more powerful. The magic of love. You're kidding me, right? No, love is the strongest power on Earth. Just, just reach out to him. The man you love is still inside of there somewhere. Just, come on, you've got to try it. Okay, okay, it's worth a shot. Joe? <laughs> Sweetie? Pudding pie? <laughs> <gasps> Joe! <laughs> I know you're in there. I find your way out, sweetheart. <laughs> You. You're doing it. Come on, you can beat him, Joe. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh, here. Let me help you. Get out of him, you beast. Actually, that was all me. Oh, sorry. Whew. Man, this guy's strong. Tell me this guy works out as much as I do. <laughs> The only way for me to destroy him is to destroy myself, Mel. No, Joe, don't do it. I have to. It's the only way that I can save you. <laughs> it's the only way. <gasps> I love you, Mel. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Joe! No, this can't be. Uh, that was amazing. He sacrificed himself to save us all from the Dark Lord. Oh. My sweet, noble Joe. I can't believe you're gone forever. Back from dead. Oh! I'm kidding, that's just me. Oh. Oh. Joe, that was amazing. Wow, you're the one with the special powers. Yeah, I tell you, it's a good thing I was here. <laughs> Otherwise, I never would have been able to defeat myself. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you, though, baby. Oh, well, now that we, Joe, <laughs> defeated the Dark Lord, I can focus all my attention on restoring you to your human form. Um, actually, can I keep this look for now? I'll have a great shot at winning the costume contest at the party. You can just change it back when I get home, okay? Bye. Hey, be safe, have fun. Yeah, uh, and don't go crossing anyone's path. Well done. Woo! Look, someday you're gonna do that to someone in a concealed carry state, and you're gonna regret it. Congratulations, Mel. You defeated the Dark Lord and saved the other realm as well as this one. Your powers are now fully restored. You are once again the great witch that you were. Really? Try it. That move is taken. Oh, okay. Uh, turn Joe into the most desirable man alive. Well, that's odd. It didn't work. Yes, it did. He's already the most desirable man I know, but now with ravioli. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, take a peek in there. Oh, no magic is needed for that area. That's perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. Look in your pants pocket. You have two tickets to Justin Timberlake at the Toledo Hollywood Bowl. What? Now I have it all. And now, Mel, you may take your place as a leader in the realm of witches. Oh, Joe, we're gonna be like witch royalty. Oh, maybe we can party with Harry Potter and Hermione. <laughs> I'm sorry, the other realm has a strict anti-immigration policy when it comes to... mortals. I don't like the way she just said that. It's your choice, Mel. If you stay here, you will lose your powers and remain a mortal forever. So, no more witchy-witchy stuff, you know, like... No, that all goes away. So what do you choose? Well, I mean, are you kidding? This is a no-brainer. You're willing to give up all your witch powers? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. What's the use of all those other powers if I don't have the power of love? Well, all right, you may stay, but your magic will be gone. 
and all memory of these events will be erased from you both. I'll miss you. Shazam! Whoa. Oh, what? I feel weird. Ooh, I feel weird too. What time is it? It's 8.30. It's, it's already 8.30? What happened to the night? <gasps> oh, trick-or-treaters. Good, because, you know, tonight's been so boring. Yeah. Hey, you know, I really love what you've done with the decorations in here. I mean, I love this fake cleaver. <laughs> I didn't do that. I thought that you did that. I didn't do that. Whoa. And Mel, I need you to change me back right now. I'll second place my furry ass. And Mel. <laughs> Went to look at neighborhood Halloween decorations. Okay, fine. I'll wait. First place in your furry face. Shut up, writer. Ooh. Alyssa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Joe, I got your text. Is everyone okay? Yeah, everything's fine. You 911 me. You do know what that means, right? It means you'll hustle up and get home when I need you. I was in the middle of a critical budget meeting, you know, and I want one is for emergencies only. Your new cabinet doors are here. Why did you tell me sooner? I would have gotten a police escort. <laughs> Yippee, cabinets. What are your clothes doing in the living room? I'm sorry, you're right. They should really all be in my room. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't have one. And speaking of other ways you personally inconvenience me. Oh, please do. You know I will. <laughs> Went down to the drugstore for you today. Sorry to say they didn't have your uh, magic lady ointment. But uh, I did uh, get you this. Curtis Gladwell? I broke up with him over a year ago. Well, I know, I know, but I ran into him today and he asked me if you were still single and I said, you know, of course she is. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you, Bert. Wow, Joe, thank you so much for taking a proactive stance in my personal dating life, but uh, just show me the freaking cabinets. All right, fine, close your eyes. Okay, here we go, get ready. Be freaking whole, huh? My cabinets! Aren't they great? I hate them. <laughs> no, 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 they're all wrong. No, 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 they're all exactly right. No, these are not the ones I picked out. These are, Leo? They're the exact ones you picked out. You drew little hearts around them. Yeah, you did. Look at that, and you wrote something down here, too. What did you write? Mr. and Mrs. Mel Cabinets Forever. See that? These pictures are not like those. Well, that happens. Uh, it, it's like my photo on Toledo Matchup. <laughs> Trust me, I've seen more disappointed faces than yours. <laughs> There's plenty of other choices in here. I don't believe them. I don't believe any of them. Okay, all right, look. Look, the bag catalog is gone, okay? It'll never hurt anybody ever again. I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't we just rip these cabinets out, okay? And we can uh, find you a cabinet specialist. Oh, oh I know a guy. I, I got his card here somewhere. Great, right. okay. You work on that. Look, the most important thing is that we keep the kitchen on track, okay? Because the kitchen is king, all right? And these cabinets, these are the linchpin, okay? Because as soon as they're done, then all the kitchen crap comes back into the kitchen, and all the living room crap comes back up from downstairs. And you can go back to that lovely basement. Yes. Finally, we will be back in our own rooms. <laughs> yeah, not on top of each other anymore. <laughs> yeah, thank God, because the last place on earth I want to be is on top of you. <laughs> oh, that'd be more horrible than those cabinets. <laughs> cheery and bright this morning, so I guess the floor is not hurting your back anymore? No, um, I actually started using that little massager that you keep by your bed. Oh? Oh, that is exactly what that's for. Yeah, well, I feel like I haven't slept in forever. I mean, Joe gets up at 5 a.m. and does his 500 push-ups. I'm sure he doesn't do 500. Oh, yes, he does, and he counts them out in Italian. Don't 
worry, you'll have your own room again very soon. Here, have some coffee. It's like cheerleaders in your brain. <laughs> Chug it, Ryder. I have to get to school early. I have a stupid meeting with the stupid spirit committee that the stupid vice principal put me on. Wow, that's a lot of stupid to be in charge of. <laughs> this is punishment. I don't want to serve on some raw, raw student government committee with a bunch of good-looking, popular kids. Wow, I'm sure they're super stoked about working with you. For the record, there is nothing wrong with good-looking people in government. Government can be fiscally sound and adorable. Eh, it'll be all the usual suspects. You know, the suck-up kids who are Facebook friends with the principal. Uh, look, Lennox, you know how you're always trying to change the world for the better? Well, you know, this committee could be your city bus that pulls your skateboard of self-righteousness through the congested streets of high school apathy. Well, this is why I have speech writers. Hey, Burke, the one-man cabinet SWAT team has arrived. Come on in here and meet them. Jules! Hey, oh, I want you to meet the lady of the house here, and I use the term house loosely. <laughs> Mel Burke, meet uh, Jules D. Sawyer. This house is going to be a beaut. It's got great bones. <laughs> He's from New Jersey. Look, I'm coming off a pretty bad cabinet experience. I um, didn't get what I thought I was getting, and um, it ended pretty badly. <laughs> well, we don't have to rush into anything here. We can take it slow. Yeah, that's fine, sure. As long as you go slow as quick as you possibly can. <laughs> All right, so there he is. Tell him what you want. Go, now. Okay, uh, well, I, you know, I'd like something contemporary, but, you know, still classics. I want the cabinets to look... Well, look, don't tell me how they should look. I want you to tell me how they should make you feel. How they make me feel? Well, I bet there's an emotional memory. Sometime you were in a kitchen that spoke to you. Psst. Hey, Mel. I really like your cans. <laughs> Soup. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to disrespect your whole process. You know what? I do have a kitchen story, actually. When I was 16, my parents took me to Paris, and uh, we were eating dinner at this bistro, and it used to be a home, and it still had that feel. You know, that's what I want. You know, when I walk in my kitchen, I want to feel like my kitchen is hugging me. Good luck with that, pal. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm gonna leave you two alone. Um, I have to run down to the hardware store and grab a couple more cans of paint, and um, perhaps... A hammer that wants to hug me. Uh, okay, Mel, I'm gonna need a little more. Uh, when you imagine your cabinets, what music do you hear? Music? Really? First feelings, now music? <laughs> I need to know the emotion you're going for. It's my process. Just go with me for a minute. Well, you know, I could tell you what the wood looks like or describe the grain or the finish, but you, know, you honestly expect me to tell you what song I think my cabinets are singing? La, 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 la. <laughs> What are you still doing here? Now, I know they're just sketches, Mel, but are they singing to you? Oh, like Michael Bublé! <laughs> oh, Jules, these are exactly the cabinets I wanted. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands all over these bad boys. Oh. Perfect, it's sold. All right, so get going with the uh, Carvey Carvey. More sketches? What are these? Oh, that, uh, that's just a notion I had for that empty room above your garage. You were talking about making that into an office, right? Oh, well, someday. Uh, why not now? Skylight, coffered ceilings, cherry wood window seat. It'd be your own private sanctuary. <gasps> oh, I've always wanted a sanctuary. You know, the summer after we went to France, my family and I went to Greece, and there was this oh, monastery. <laughs> Come on back here to America, all right? Your country needs you. <laughs> to stay on task in the kitchen. So, uh, why don't you make like your mates, the uh, kangaroos, and hop to it, okay? Joe, never insult the people who brought a shark week. <laughs> Look, Jules, I want you to build my dream office. Go, make my life perfect. I won't rest till you're satisfied. Ooh, I like the sound of that. I'll be back in the morning with a lot more wood. Uh, I'll be waiting. <laughs> What the hell was that? What? I'll be waiting. I didn't say it like that. No, you're right. I actually toned down the desperation. Yeah, I don't know what your problem is, unless for some twisted, sick reason you feel threatened. What? No, not at all. I'm just saying, you know, he's trying to work his way in every room in this house. If that happens, he'll never leave. I mean, is, is that what you want? Well, he is kind of easy on the eyes and not so yappy on the ears. You know what this is, Burke? This is job creep, all right? Classic job creep. 
The guy's asked to do one job, and he creeps his way into everything else. Oh, really? Job creeper? Wow, yeah, I mean, you started as my nanny, but then you became my construction manager, and now you're just a senior vice president of pissing me off! <laughs> really? Well, you think I'd have a better parking spot then, baby? <laughs> Okay, team, Bobcat spirit is at an all-time low. That's why the administration asked us, the school opinion makers, and others, <laughs> to help. You know what we need, Aiden? Cool events. And I've got the greatest one ever. Dress-up Fridays. I so heart dress-up days. Well, we all heart your enthusiasm. We could do disco dress-up day, 60s dress-up day. 70s dress-up day. Uh, ooh, ooh. Stress-up day. <laughs> We're gonna run out of decades by Thanksgiving. Sebastian, do, do you have any ideas? <laughs> what about you, Lennox? I see you've written shut up about a hundred times on your pad there. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, as awesome as it is to find out what's in everyone's closet. I have a red Michael Jackson jacket. <laughs> It might also be cool to find out what's in their minds. Like, uh, every Thursday at assembly, we could put up a microphone where students can say whatever they want. Like a freedom mic. Okay. What do we think of Lennox's idea? 90s dress-up day! Yes, that's so unexpected! <laughs> okay, well, uh, you guys seem to have this all under control, so, um, I'm just gonna step out for a minute and not come back. I just need you to take a gander at something and sign off on it. Oh, well, I approve. <laughs> I haven't shown you anything yet. Oh, well, I guess I'm just in a buying mood. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think? Oh, you're perfect. <laughs> I guess I'll let the artists get back to work. Hey, I, I was just about to break for lunch. Uh, I packed an extra semi. It's buffalo mozzarella and heirloom tomato. I'm growing in my backyard. The tomatoes, not the buffaloes. Oh, well, I guess I could stay for a Sammy with tomato. <laughs> I'll just uh, clear some of this mess out of here. Wow, you managed to make that look very macho. Ciabatta or baguette? I made them myself. Wow, is there anything you can't make? And does your girlfriend know how lucky she is? Ah, my girlfriend. Well, there's something I wish I could build. I once built a boyfriend out of pillows. <laughs> I was 10. I was 10. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, it gets better. Try this olive. Mm. <laughs> Hello. I'm here. <laughs> Been here. Longest 30 seconds of my life. What are you even doing here? Did you forget something? Like your manners? <laughs> Mrs. Westman, this woman is a total nightmare. Why can't all my clients be like you? <laughs> because they have boundaries. <laughs> it's the middle of the day, Burke. What are you even doing here? Well, Jules needed me to approve the cabinet doors. Oh, really? How come he didn't call me? They're my doors. Yeah, but I'm the construction manager, right? This is my territory. What is? You. Well, no, I mean, you know, your house. <laughs> I don't appreciate another guy just, you know, swooping in here and uh, screwing up the chain of command. This has nothing to do with chain of command or screwing up. Good, let's keep it that way. Oh, Mel, I'm so sorry. There's an emergency at Mrs. Westburn's house. It never ends with her. But tomorrow, we'll huddle over those plans for your new office sanctuary. Oh, well, I like the cuddle. Huddle. <laughs> Hurry back. Leave me alone. <laughs> Don't you see the game this guy is playing here? Oh, come on, he struts around in this place, you know, with guns blazing, and all of a sudden, there's more cabinets being ordered. That is not what's going on here. Look, I'm gonna say something to you, right? You're not gonna like it, but I'm gonna say it anyway, okay? What kind of a guy comes to work wearing T-shirts that tight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Muscles hanging out everywhere. Frankly, it's gross, okay? Clearly, the man is just, you know, overcompensating for something. Yeah, it's just sad. It is. You're falling for him, aren't you? What? No, I mean, why would I fall for a guy who's perfect and all? You know what, you think that's my type? 
Well, bleh. You can't even be honest with yourself for like a second. Oh, I can be honest. Big time honest. You know what? All right, what's going on here is totally unhealthy. Exactly. Yes, getting involved with a hunk who works in your house is just nuts. No, you being so involved in my life is unhealthy. You know, you're always here, having opinions. Can I help it if I have great ideas? Well, we won't know until you actually have one. <laughs> you know, even though my kitchen's not done, you're all up in my grill. Oh, yeah, because you're never up in my personal business. Works both ways, Berkey. No, this doesn't work. This is toxic. You know what? You're right. I want out. Well, uh, finally, a great idea. Good, go. Great, I'm going. Yeah, but pack up your stuff and go. To... To... The new room above the garage. You know what? Yeah, I will. All right, but I'm going to tell you something. Once I go, I ain't coming back to the basement. I'm counting on it. You know, it'll be worth losing my monastery. Sanctuary. Whatever, Ari. It's yours. And all they cared about was organizing different dress-up days. Disco day, pajama day. Oh, ooh, how about slutty cheerleader day? Stop suggesting that. Anyway, I'm not going back. But what do you mean? You were appointed, you know, like a pretty blonde Supreme Court justice. <laughs> and I thought Ada, Mr. I get along with everybody, would at least take what I had to say seriously. I had this great idea about putting up a freedom mic where everybody could speak out. Yeah, because then everybody could oh, finally be say... be quiet already. <laughs> okay, honey, let me tell you how government works. You know, even sometimes with a good idea like yours, you still have to push, push, push. You know, but if you're not there in the room, you can't push. Yeah, whatever. I'm so done with those people. Ugh, quitter. I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect piece of toast out of that thing. Uh, I can make my own toast. Nope, up, 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 up. Watch this. <clears throat> oh. Need a little help there? I am perfectly capable of making my own sandwiches. Sandwiches. Oh, I see. What are you doing? Playing another little uh, picnic with the uh, thunder from down under? For your information, there are no picnics planned in my kitchen because Jules is stuck all day over at Mrs. Nightmare's house. Oh, so you're just going to take the sandwiches over there and then... You know what? I almost did that whole toxic thing again. No, you know, my fault. I volunteer information. Yeah. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> uh, Lennox, can you get it? Uh, I'm a little busy here. Fine. Oh, uh, hello. Hi. Listen, I just wanted to catch you before that spirit committee meeting today, which I hope you're going to. Uh, you know, Aiden, the spirit committee kind of broke my spirit, so I think I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Who's the cute boy selling dimples door to door? Yeah, that's Aiden. He's president of everything and king of school spirits. <laughs> Look, I know Martin and Stella have some bad ideas. No, they're not bad. They're just incredibly lame and absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> but you, yours wasn't. Why don't you come back? I don't have the disco balls to fight those two. <laughs> yeah, but together, you and me, we could change things. All we have to do is push, push, push. I can't push alone. I gotta say, that makes a lot of cute sense. He says, why didn't I say that before? That's exactly what I said. Yeah, but did you say it with the cute boy dimples? Mm, good point. Mel, what are you doing here? sandwiches and I brought potato chips. Oh, that, that is so sweet. But if Mrs. Westburn catches me slacking, she'll chew my head off. Jules, darling, did you want the Pinot or the Zinfandel? Oh, go, go. It, it gets ugly once she starts drinking. <gasps> oh, my cabinets! Who's she? Uh, uh, Mrs. Westburn, I, I'd like you to meet another client of mine, Ms. Burke. Ms. Burke. Oh, the needy one. <laughs> See those olives right there? You might want to wash them before he puts them in your mouth. They've been around. Hey. Oh, hey. So, how's the new room coming up there? It's going to be awesome, actually, as soon as I find all the uh, loose nails. But I have this great system. What I do is I step on them, 
and then I just pulled them out of my toes. <laughs> hey, so how did your, uh, how'd your picnic go with Jules? Oh, so I show up looking extra cute, effortlessly, you know, ready to have lunch, and then, uh, well, you know what? I'm saying too much again. You know, I, I don't want to ruin this healthy distance thing we just started. I think you're right. And as a matter of fact, I have to say, I mean, since we stepped up the privacy, I can actually feel us being, you know, a little more civil toward each other. Yeah. Yeah, me too. You know, I think it's much better not sharing every intimate detail. Could not agree with you more. Oh, by the way, I picked up some more of that quilted toilet paper that you like. Oh, the one the little cartoon bears use? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Well, uh, I gotta get back upstairs and continue working on my new room, so, uh, I'll see you. Hey, Joe. Yeah. You know, now that you're, you know, in the room over the garage, it's gonna be a little weird. I mean, you not being within shouting distance. You can shout louder than you think, Burke. No, uh, you're just saying that. <laughs> um, well, good night. Good night, Longo. Yeah, what? Nothing, just testing. Cento novanta otto, trecento novanta nove, quattro, cento. So much for privacy. Hey, Ryder, is Lennox here? Lennox! Oh, you know what? She must be upstairs. Lennox! I heard you! Would you stop yelling and... Oh, hey, Aiden. Hey, you know, I know you guys are on that student council uh, spirit thing. I know you're taking suggestions from mm -hmm. the... Get out. I'll save it for the freedom, Mike. <laughs> Here's the proposal that's going to the vice principal. It looks good. I guess that's the end of our committee. Maybe we could keep on meeting. You mean like more spirit stuff? No, like I was thinking a smaller committee, just two people. And we could talk about other important issues like uh, what movie to go see. You're asking me out, aren't you? I was trying. I don't know. Dating a kid like you could really hurt my street cred. <laughs> but I'll risk it. <laughs> Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Well, I'm off. Watch the kids, feed the kids, try not to kill the kids. Got it. Wait, what was that last one? <laughs> wow, look at that outfit. Never seen that before, huh? Where are you off to? A night out in the town with your sister wives? Uh, I'm going out with Donald. Yeah? Where's he taking you? Barn raising? You gonna churn a little butter? No one's butter is getting churned. It's over with Donald. Oh, I see. So that's that's your dumping outfit. Yep, this is defensive dressing. You know, you don't bring out the snack tray unless you're gonna be serving dinner. I don't wanna get the guy's hopes up. Yeah, I don't think you'd turn on a pilgrim in that outfit. So why is your relationship with Donald coming to such a hasty end? Well, we never really clicked. You know, Donald's a good guy and everything, but I just wasn't feeling it. Nor do I intend to feel it, which makes it a lot easier to give him the heave-ho. I'm curious, when you break up with a guy, do you go in there with, like, a script, or do you just wing it? No, tightly scripted. Yeah, the goal is to be brief and merciful. Professional. So, like a mob hit. Exactly. You know, it's the least I can do. The guy is taking me to dinner. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're whacking the guy and you're still gonna eat? Well, I'm not completely heartless. Take it to go. You know, anything that travels well. Risotto, pasta, cob salad, dressing on the side. Wait a minute, you know what? I, I actually still see a little bit of skin here. Hold on a minute. Um, let me just... There you go. I would break up with you so hard. I guess you're stuck with me. You know what you're having? I can't order unless I know what the other person's having. Oh, uh, you, uh well, the halibut looks good, Oof, but it doesn't travel well. I mean, from the kitchen to the table, look how far away that is. Good evening. 
Are you ready to... Risotto. Donald's? Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I'll have that, too. No? Uh, um... Well, yeah, okay. Very good. May I interest you in a chocolate souffle for dessert? I love souffle. We ask you to order it now as it takes 40 minutes to prepare. Ooh, 40? Yeah, there's no way I'll still be... <laughs> hungry. So, uh, Donald... There's something I need to tell you. Okay, but there's something I need to tell you first. Good idea. Mine might be kind of tough to follow. I was fired this morning. Ten years of loyal service, and they kicked me to the curb. Oh, wow, I'm sorry. You know, when one door closes, another one opens. And then another one closes. This has been one of the worst days ever. Almost canceled our date tonight, but then I realized... Still got one good thing left in my life. Oh, what's that? Oh, me? I don't know what I'd do without you, Mel. Your smile is like sunlight breaking through the clouds of my despair. So, what was it you wanted to tell me? I can't break up with him now. He's got the confidence of pudding. I have to wait till he gets back on his feet. You know, finds another job. Finds another job in this economy? <laughs> Hope you like pudding. Oh, I like a man I can chew. Uh, I, we've got to find him another job. Oh, I'm sorry, we? <gasps> You're right. You. You've got to find him another job. Come on, I've heard you brag about all the executives you hired back when you ran America. You can do this. Okay, now I know you're desperate because you're flattering me. <laughs> With the truth, you know what executives are looking for. Donald's been in the same job forever. He doesn't know how to sell himself. No, but you are Joe Longo, the Zen master of business. You know, you're not the first person to say that. I know, I've heard you say it. So you'll do it? Yes. Greatness calls. Thank you. Oh, but you gotta do it quick. Because I don't want to extend myself in other areas to keep this relationship going, if you know what I mean. You know, my charity only goes so far. I don't want to lay it all out. I get it. Hello, Lennox. Hey, Holly. Uh, let me get right here for you. Um, actually, I'd like to speak to you in private. Uh, okay. Let's do it outside where there's daylight. And witnesses. <laughs> This past Saturday, I attended Dennis Kitson's birthday party. While at said party, a most terrible thing happened. Someone couldn't get to the point. I accidentally kissed a boy who wasn't Ryder. Accidentally? What, you tripped and your tongue fell in his mouth? How exactly did this mishap occur? Well, at the party, I was complaining about a very unsightly pimple which had come to dominate my life. And my forehead. Tim Logan heard me complaining about it and said, Yo, I don't see any zit. That yo was such a confidence booster that the next thing I knew, our lips were entwined. But Ryder is your boyfriend. How could you do that to my little brother? I know, I know. I feel awful. I came to you because you know him best. What should I do? Well, you have to tell Ryder. <sighs> Darn. I was hoping you'd say we all make mistakes, just move on. <laughs> If you don't tell him, I will. No, 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 please don't, don't. Look, I'll do it, I swear. All right, all right, I won't say anything, but don't make me regret this. Oh, Lennox, you're a true friend. Okay, that's enough. I know how much you like to accidentally make out with people. <laughs> okay, so your resume's looking a lot better, all right? But the most important thing is how you're gonna perform in a job interview. All right, so, let's say the guy asks you what your greatest strength is. What do you say? I don't know, loyalty? All right, what's your greatest weakness? I have a tiny bladder. Here's a tip. Don't ever use the word bladder in a job interview. Oh, God, no one's gonna want to hire me. I... Come on, man, you gotta work on your confidence, all right? You gotta make them want you. You don't take no for an answer. Excuse me, can I borrow your newspaper for a sec? Sure. I'm only looking at the one ads anyway. I'm unemployed. There you go. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, actually, um, I'm not sure if we want to part with this newspaper here. Please, there isn't any Wi-Fi in here, and I really want to check out the movie times for Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse? That's, that's a pretty scary movie. You gonna go see that with your boyfriend? No boyfriend, just me. No, I'm sorry. I don't think I can let you do that. I can't let you go see this scary movie all by yourself. What do you say, um, I meet you at the Orpheum tonight? Oh, someone's pretty sure of themselves. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll see you tonight at 8. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh. Think she'll really show up? Yeah, man, she's gonna show up. <laughs> See, what you just witnessed there, Donna, was a, a lesson in confidence, all right? I didn't take no for an answer. Matter of fact, I just sold her something she didn't even know that she wanted. You know what that was? 100% Joe Lango. What are you selling, Donald? All this? <laughs> really got a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> That smells good. What is that? It's my famous butternut squash ravioli. Oh? Is it really famous, Joe? Is it dating a supermodel? Did it beat up a paparazzi? Was it on Dancing with the Stars? Finished iron, you did. Hey, it's Donald. What? Don't open it. He, he sees me. Why is he here? You know, if only there was a way we could find out. Hey, Donald, what's up, buddy? Yes, what brings you here so delightfully unannounced? I wanted to tell you, I just had an interview with Hartman Glassberg, and it went great. Really? So you might be employed soon, because that would be awesome. No, didn't get the job. Uh, then you said it went great. It did. Made it all the way through the interview without getting sick. Ah, good for you. Till just now in your driveway. <laughs> Donald, remember how we talked about not oversharing, keeping a little mystery? Right, right. I didn't say where in the driveway. <laughs> the sessions with you were helping so much, Joe. Even though I got shot down for the job, I still had the confidence to come over here and say, hey, Mel Burke, you and I are having dinner tonight. Oh, sorry, Donald. You know, Joe made his famous uh, orange lumps. Sorry, pretty lady, but I will not take no for an answer. <laughs> no. OK. Hey, don't back down. <clears throat> Can I call you later? Don't use questions. I'm calling you later. <laughs> but right now I have to, uh, you know, use the restroom for something really mysterious. What the hell are you teaching him? You know, you might not want to tour the factory, but I promise you when the product hits the shelves, you're going to be impressed. Oh, well, when would that be? I don't know how much longer I can keep pity dating him. You know, he's getting handsy. Look, I'll bump him up to five sessions a week, all right? Next week, he has two more of those interviews, and I think one of those is gonna come through. And then you will be able to break that poor sucker's heart guilt-free. <laughs> I like the sound of that. There you go. <laughs> Boy, it's been a while since I've seen you. Has it? I mean, it's only been five sessions. I mean, uh, a week. <laughs> so, um, Joe says that you've had some interviews and you might have a job offer. I wouldn't say that. Oh. I got two job offers. Oh, thank God, that's great news. I mean, for you, too. No, for you, mainly. Suddenly, I'm in demand. I'm a whole new Donald. My life is starting a new chapter. Speaking of new chapters and fresh starts, I think we should talk about us. Um, look, in every relationship, there comes a time... Are you folks ready to order? Oh, yes. Uh, I don't see it here, but I'd love the steak sandwich. I'm sorry. We only serve the steak sandwich at lunch. Oh, that's too bad. It's just so easy to eat while you're driving. <laughs> to dessert <now. laughs> Do me a favor, could you send the manager over? Thank you. Oh, you don't have to do that. No, I got this. No, it's okay, I'll just settle for something else. I don't think a woman like you should ever settle for anything. Good evening. May I help you? I hope so. <clears throat> My dinner companion has her heart set on your steak sandwich, and I would like for her to have it. I'm sorry, sir, that's a lunch item. I understand it usually is, but you have the steak, you have the bread. I'm sure the technology exists to so, could you make that happen as a personal favor for the lovely lady and me? I believe I can make that work, sir. All right. I knew you were the man for the job. Wow. That was amazing the way you mind-controlled him. You're like the steak sandwich Jedi. No. The key to getting what you want is never take no for an answer. So, what was it you were going to say about fresh starts? I think we ought to have one right now. <laughs> your help. Yeah, I get that a lot. Holly cheated on Ryder. Wow, what'd she do? She whipped some other boy behind his back? Oh, she made out with another guy at a party, and she was supposed to fess up like a week ago, but she hasn't done it yet, and someone needs to tell Ryder the truth. Well, yeah. Why aren't you that someone? Please. I don't have the heart. 
heart, and you're so good at everything. Only everything I've ever tried. <laughs> Hey, buddy. So, just making a little idle chit-chat here. How are things going with you and Holly? Great. It couldn't be better. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, in the past, you may have been a tad bit controlling. You... you do know what a, a tad is, right? <laughs> yeah, baby frog. Anyway... <laughs> yesterday, she let me blow my nose in front of her. It's a big step for you guys. <laughs> so, you're happy? Couldn't be happier. Oh, all right. Well, it's good. <laughs> it's good. I can't do it. I can't do it. He's in a happy relationship. You know how rare that is? You have to. He needs to know. I mean, just look at him. Sad and clueless, drinking his milk. <sighs> hey, uh, writer. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, um, when you're going out with a girl, you know, you, um, you think that she's one way, but, uh, you know, in all actuality, she's really another. So what are you saying? Holly cheated on you, bud. Oh, yeah, I know. She met out with Tim Logan at that party. Wait, you knew? How clueless do you think I am? <laughs> Why didn't you tell Holly that you knew? Why would I? It's been the best two weeks of my life. Tomorrow, she's baking me a pie. I love pie. Are you upset? I was at first, but then she started acting so sweet. It's obvious that she feels bad about what she did. I'll make her feel worse. So you're just gonna let her suffer with her own guilt? It's pie, man. <laughs> Boysenberry, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> Look, if you're lucky enough to find someone great, you do what you can to hold on to them. You are absolutely right about that, Ryder. You know, people are always throwing away their relationships, but I say you gotta work on it. I'm pretty sure I've never heard you say that. <laughs> I do. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go upstairs and Skype with my woman. She's going to do my math homework for me, then watch me fall asleep. There really is somebody for everyone. So what's up with you and this whole new sunny outlook on relationships? Weren't you just out dumping Donald? No. You know, I saw something in Donald tonight that I hadn't really seen before. Oh, yeah? What was that? Well, he was different. He was cool. He was self-assured. I can't really explain it, but he was just so... Me? No, he was nothing like you. I liked him. He was take charge. He was confident. Yeah? You know why he was confident? Because I taught him to be confident. No, he was confident because of all the job offers he's been getting. Uh, why do you think he's getting all these job offers? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you in the interviews with him with your hand up his puppet hole? <laughs> he's getting the job offers because I put him through a crash course at the University of Southern Longo. Oh, really? <laughs> What's your school cheer? We are full of crap. <laughs> All right, you know what? I will prove it to you. Give me an example of confident Donald. Okay, tonight at dinner, um, I wanted the steak sandwich, but the waiter said that that's a lunch item. So Donald... Called for the manager and gave him the what my woman wants she gets speech. How'd you know that? Uh, it's my speech! <laughs> I taught him that speech! You're going out with a guy that I trained. He's using all my moves. Mason Burke, you are dating Joe Longo. <laughs> no, you... It's... <laughs> you... Exactly. Me. Me. Hey, somebody order a Donald, straight up. Hey, you. Ready for dinner? Almost. Are you ready now? Uh-huh. I'm taking you to a great Thai restaurant. I was really craving Chinese. Mm, I think you'll change your mind. No, I don't think I will. Uh, I'm betting you'll come around. Wow, you have such an ego. And it works for me, doesn't it? Yeah, I can't stand it. Mm. <laughs> so tight it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Miss Berg, but the city attorney's on the phone. Oh, tell him I'm busy making out. Okay, no, I was just kidding. Put him through. I'll uh, be out there when you're ready. Save some of those for after dinner. How do you type so fast? You must have magic fingers. No, I think they're just regular fingers. Well, they're the prettiest regular fingers I've ever seen. You could be a hand model. Oh. Donald? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, what was that? Oh, just making a lady smile. 
Now let's go see if I can make you smile. I'm so glad you wanted to watch Zombie Academy for senior year. I don't think you were into these kind of movies. I like whatever you like, sweetie. <laughs> Whoa, no more torso for that guy. Oh, my. So, Ryder, uh, if you want, you can keep watching the movie and I'll massage your feet. Socks or no socks? No socks, if that's what you'd like. Holly, you're the best. Oh, I'm not that great. Are you kidding? The greatest girlfriend the guy's ever had. No. No, Ryder, I'm not. Oh, I can't take this anymore. I have a terrible confession to make. I have kissed the lips of another. What? No, Holly, that cannot be true. You could never have kissed Tim Logan. Who said Tim Logan? No one. I just took a shot because, you know, he's so cute. You knew. You knew this whole time. And you let me be nice to you. I'm sorry. Lennox, you told Ryder you swore you wouldn't. What? I didn't say squat. I massaged his naked foot for nothing, telling him how wrong it was to exploit an innocent girl. Innocent? You tried to inhale Tim Logan's face. Hey, watch what you say. That's my girlfriend you're talking to. <laughs> you're defending her? Wow, you two deserve each other. I now pronounce you Mr. and Mrs. Whack Job. <laughs> Oh, you are in so much trouble, mister. Now put your sock back on. Hey. Hey. That was a quick date. Man, you were easy. <laughs> I pulled the trigger. I dumped Donald. You dumped him? What happened to working things out? You can't work things out with an egomaniac. He was horrible, smug, arrogant. You're right, Joe. He is you. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you said that he wasn't me. Yo, that was before you assified him. <laughs> you know, at dinner, Donald told me he was tied down to one company for 10 years. He won't be tied down to one lady. He actually said, we can see each other as long as you know I'm freelance. Freelance! <laughs> what? I hardly ever say that anymore. <laughs> wow, I gave him all that confidence and he just took it to the dark side. Yeah, he was flirting with everyone, the receptionist, the waitress, the effeminate valet parking guy. <laughs> you ruined him, Joe, in what could have been a perfectly good relationship. Poor Donald. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. I guess I just, you know, brought him along too quickly. Ah, well, you're welcome. For what? For what? Uh, a few weeks ago, a lady came to me and said, Joe, Zen master, miracle worker, will you please help me get Donald a job so I can dump him? And two weeks later, Donald got a job and you got to dump him. Miracle accomplished. Oh, so that was your plan all along? Eric, the point isn't how we got here, right? It's that we've arrived. Okay, must you turn everything into a reason for self-celebration? No, I'm just saying, you know, that one day maybe, you know, you'll start doing everything right, and then you'll know what it's like to be in my world. <laughs> What's in uh, your dumping doggy box there? <clears throat> oh, chicken satay. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, you want some? Yeah, dump your own guy. <laughs> Hey, Joe, um, I need your help, and I, I can't talk to Aunt Mel. I get it. Guy stuff, huh? Sit down. What's up? Teach me how to bake a pie. <laughs> Holly found out you knew, didn't she? Yep. <laughs> so no more her doing your homework, no more massages? No more a lot of things. <laughs> and order is restored. <laughs> All right, buddy. Time to man up, dude. Put on your apron. <laughs> Will you get off the computer, please? You've already done plenty of research on Columbia. I can't believe Lennox's wonderful professor, Evita, is taking her there next semester. Do you know what they have in Columbia? Really good coffee? <laughs> yeah, but when you order your espresso with two shots, they come out of a gun. Honey, relax, all right? Look, we have several more moves left in this chess match. We don't even know if she's going there for sure yet. But I'll tell you this, if you get upset, you're going to push her right into Evita's arms. Uh, it's pronounced Evita. <laughs> Hey, honey. <laughs> Did 
you see that? She was biting that croissant, but she was really biting my head off. Do you know in Colombia they have spiders that can actually bite your head off? <laughs> yeah, I did a little uh, Googling myself. <laughs> anyway, back to you. A professor has driven a wedge between me and Lennox. I've lost her. You know, I blew it with my completely appropriate reaction to her little trip. You tried to put her passport in the toaster. Like I said, completely appropriate. Why don't you just focus on things that you can control, all right? Like your relationship with Lennox, you know? Nurture it, bond with her. So your daughter calls you dad once, and suddenly you're the wizard of parenting? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you saw I handed yesterday, man. I found out Danny had a little wine tasting party, and boom, I was all over it. I took care of it. So yes, I am on a streak. Look, not to get technical, but one victory does not make a streak. Just saying, don't bet against me. <laughs> um, hey, I was thinking, you know, you've studied more in one month than I did my entire six years of college. <laughs> you need a little break. How about you and I go get our nails did? You're just gonna try to talk me out of going to Columbia with no, 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 I read the State Department guidelines. It sounds really exciting. Especially the part where they say, never look directly at the soldiers. I mean, that is good advice anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, what do you say? You know, 3 p.m. at the nail salon, on me. Sure, let's do that. Never been against the streak. <laughs> Canceling the camping trip was my punishment. Now you're calling to tell my mom? She needs to know what's going on, Dan. Hey, guys, help me out. I'm having a nail polish crisis. OK, um, should I go safe with put a ring on it red or roll the dice with twerk coys? <laughs> you cannot tell my mom I drink wine. She's a total hard ass about this stuff. Wait a second. An acupuncturist who tours with rock bands is a hard ass about drinking? That's exactly why. She's seen the damage, and now she has a zero-tolerance policy about drugs, alcohol, and for some reason, the Jonas Brothers. Felicia needs to know, all right? And you're going to be the one to tell her. What? No, 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 please. Come on, Joe. Isn't that a wonderful way to show your daughter you love her? Here's your phone, honey. Dial it. Uh, but, but I, think, I think I forgot the number. You did? Let me help you with that. Dial mom. Here you go. Um, hi, mom. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm calling to tell you something. See, I had some girlfriends over. Anyway, um, there was some wine there, and they drank some, so I had some too. It's to be sociable. Yes, I know I made a mistake, but dad is handling it. <laughs> Okay. See you when the tour's over. Love you. Bye. So? How did everything go? Great. She was glad I told her. She said it showed maturity. You see, the lesson here is that we're a team, all right? A team that always does what Captain Dad says. <laughs> I'm happy to call you Dad. Just please don't make me call you Captain. I'm good with Dad. And the street continues. <laughs> Don't feel bad, Mel. I know parenting can be frustrating at times, especially when I make it look so easy. But, uh, you know, <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> you can shut up. It's Felicia. Hey, Felicia. What? <laughs> yes, but I really think you're overreacting. Yes, but I really think you're... Yes, but I really think... Yes, but I... Yes, but... Yes. So how'd that go, Captain Dad? Felicia just quit the tour. She's coming here to take Danny home. Oh, no, just because you let Danny drink? I didn't let her drink. I, I don't believe this. I'm gonna lose my daughter. And three months earlier than we agreed on. Well, okay, you know what, Joe? You were the one that was able to talk Felicia into letting her come here in the first place. You know, you can get that time back. You just got to use that famous Longo charm. Yeah, I mean, worked on her before. 
Not that kind of charm. You know, that's how you ended up with the kid in the first place. Mm hmm. I'm gonna dial it back to 50%. <laughs> okay, so I was gonna go with blue, but then I thought, why not go with black? Black is slimming. Everyone will say, have your fingers lost weight? I was thinking, wait, you ready? Polka dots on one hand, stripes on the other. Cute. Cute. It's genius. Oh, this is so great. It's been so long since us girls have taken our fingers and toes on a mini vacation. Avita. Hi, Lennox. Hello, Councilwoman. I just finished going over the notes you typed up. I made some revisions and wondered if you could incorporate them. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm just heading out with my aunt, but as soon as we get back. Oh, uh, well, I was hoping you'd get right on it. Oh, sorry, no can do. This is a very important event and it cannot be rescheduled. We're getting mani pedis. Yeah, at one of the nice salons where you have to make an appointment. Nail salon? Really? Is there something wrong with that? No, it's just oppressed women kneeling at your feet, inhaling toxic fumes all day, all so you could look like a painted doll. Uh, they wear masks and they massage your hands and tell you you're beautiful. Who else does that? No one. Lennox, I have to say, I'm surprised you'd buy into such a classist ritual. Your foot is in the hands of these women, but you're really stepping on their heads, keeping them down. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I guess I never thought about it like that. Maybe the nail salon's not such a good idea. Okay, <gasps> Professor Buzzkill. <laughs> Let's put this in perspective. I want to take my niece to the nail salon. Oh, scary. Um, you want to fly her to the jungles of Colombia to chillax with machine gun toting drug lords. Which one's worse? Let me think. Um, on one hand, you could wind up with little foot fungus. On the other hand, you could wind up a little dead. <laughs> Yeah, sure, I may be a narcissist, but you, Professor, are a self-important windbag. And what's more... <laughs> well, can't argue with that. Email me the finished off when you're done. Will do. <sighs> so, let's go get us some happy feet. You just humiliated me and insulted someone I respect a great deal. I'm not going anywhere with you. I thought I made some really good points. Before the... <laughs> Felicia, how do you get off a plane and still look fresh as a daisy? <laughs> Danny's leaving today, Joe. This is not open for negotiation, and don't try to pull out that Longo charm. Oh, hey, I'm not gonna pull anything out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I respect you way too much for that. Look, um, why don't you just, you know, stay here for a couple of days, and, 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 and you'll see this is really a great environment for Danny. Huh. So your idea of a great environment is an open bar for 13-year-olds? Let's, let's not fight, okay? Look, we made a deal. Danny was supposed to stay here for three more months to get to know her dad. I think we should stick to it. She's leaving with me today. Two months. Two months is more than fair. I'll tell you what, Joe. I do need some time to go to Danny's school. I've got to get her assignments. I need to start the transfer paperwork. So we'll leave on Thursday. That's 48 hours. 72 hours? 24 hours. Oh, come on. Will you be reasonable, Felicia? 23 hours. Wait a minute. Let me just hold on a 22, second. 22. Stop it. Wait. 21. Oh, 48 hours, all right? 48 hours. That's, that's my final offer, so you better Fine. take it. Okay. So where's Felicia? Oh, you just missed her. And she took Danny? Oh, no. My husband's daughter is taken away, and I'm at the nail salon. Evita's right. I am a narcissist. No, Danny's still here, honey. She's at band practice. Oh, thank goodness. So, what do you think? Cute, right? Yes, very. So I managed to squeeze 48 hours with Danny out of Felicia. Two days? That's not much. I know, but you know, when Longo's get handed lemons, we uh, turn it into lemonade. Well, when Burke's get handed lemons, we use them to garnish our martinis. Yeah, anyway, I made a list of everything that, you know, a father needs to teach daughter, and I'm gonna have to do it in the next 48 hours, because I don't know when Felicia's gonna let me see Danny again. How to play poker. How to change a tire. How to hotwire a car. Oh, I had a boyfriend in college once that could open a beer bottle with his eye socket. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to get to that one. But uh, I have to teach her how to defend herself, how to spot a player. The point is, I'm gonna be crazy busy with Danny for the next 48 hours. So you're gonna have plenty of time to bomb with Lennox. Yeah, except Lennox wants nothing to do with me after I went off on a Vita. Not my best move. Well, I better go upstairs and admit to Lennox I was wrong. What? Do you really think you were wrong? No, but I'm out of bullets. And you know who's not out of bullets? The Colombian drug lords. Knock, knock. Got 
a minute? Go away. Look, I'm trying to be supportive of this decision of yours to go to Colombia with Evita. So I got you this handy Spanish phrase book. Yeah, it has all the useful phrases for tourists. Where's the bathroom? That's a good one. I'll have bottled water. Mm. Oh, here's a biggie. My country will pay handsomely for my return. <laughs> ML, you made that up. Hey, you're going to a place where that's a phrase you have to learn. Thanks to Evita. <laughs> okay, seriously, stop calling her that. Fine. What are you doing? I'm just remembering your face because, you know, I might never see it again. <laughs> okay, let me see this book. Um, oh, here's a useful Colombian expression. Oh, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Go away. <laughs> it's pronounced adios. Go away. <laughs> cards do you want? One. Whoa, okay. In poker, you never say anything with a question mark. All right? It's just like life. You gotta lead with confidence. Give me one. That's more like it. How do we do? Flush. Now that's poker. Thanks. I'm going to bed. No, 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 no. You're not. Well, we've been at this life skill stuff for five hours. Yes, exactly. And now we're going to head out into the driveway, and I'm going to teach you how to change a tire. Uh, I'm going to get grease on my pajamas. Not if you do it the right way, sweetie. <laughs> Admit it. Proofing my paper is much more fulfilling than a trip to the nail salon. It is. Although, every time I hit send, I noticed Ms. Pinky was looking a tad humdrum. <laughs> Just a little levity. I'm having a brainstorm. Why not help other women make the same enlightened decision you did? We could set up an education station in front of that nail salon your aunt goes to and teach ignorant women about class oppression. Yes, that could really raise awareness. Raise awareness? We do this right, we could put that place out of business. Oh, I am good. Oh, but wait, if we do that, the women who work there will lose their jobs. Collateral damage, acceptable losses for the cause. They're not losses, Evita, they're people. Oh, Lennox, you have so much to unlearn. I can still hear the rinse and spin cycle of your aunt's sociopathic brainwashing. Okay, is this about workers' rights or my aunt? Your aunt is the one selfishly trying to keep you from going to Colombia. She may not be perfect, but my aunt filibustered city council for two days to open extra homeless shelters during the last blizzard. Okay, my aunt cares about people. I care about progress. Well, I think I'd rather care about people. Evita. Yeah, I don't feel any pressure at all, my elbow. It's gonna take a lot more than that to break your assailant's arm, honey. Oh, I'm tired and I'm hungry. When you woke me up, you promised me pancakes. Pancakes are for killers, all right? <laughs> Besides, you got plenty of sleep last night. Three hours! That's it, I'm going back to bed and don't even think about waking me up. We don't have a lot of time left, honey, before your mom comes to take you home. Good morning. Good night. We haven't even gone over Frank Sinatra versus Tony Bennett yet. Why is she so upset? Oh, because I promised her pancakes if she could break my arm. Ooh, I'll take that deal. Give me that arm. Okay, no, get away from me. Listen to me, I'm trying to teach her everything she's gonna need to know for the rest of her life, and she didn't want it. Well, Joe, she only reacted that way because she's 13. Don't worry, that attitude usually goes away by the time she's... Well, probably never, because Lennox is still doing it to me. If she's still doing it, I thought you were smoothing things over with her. Well, I tried, but she was irritated by my insistence that she not die. Oh, look, honey, if all else fails, a tried and true way to make a woman who's truly upset feel better is to tell her how nice her hair looks. That's your advice? It works every time. That's stupid and condescending. That would never work on me. Well, of course it wouldn't work on you, honey, because you're way too smart and beautiful to fall for that. I am. You know, and if you're such a wizard at parenting, how come your daughter just stormed away angry at you? Because this is an odd case, all right? I'm trying to cram it all in there in the next 48 hours because, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to see her again. What? Joe, aren't you overreacting a little? No, I'm not. Look, Felicia has full custody over Danny. She could keep her away from me till she's 18, and by that point, you know, it'll be too late. Well, does Danny know why you're acting like such a crazy man? I mean, being such a good father? <laughs> well, I was going to tell her, but I'm afraid it'll scare her. You know, I think telling her might scare her a little less than waking her up in the middle of the night, pretending you're a mugger. 
that works. Oh, honey, I have to say, your hair looks really nice. <laughs> oh, I love you so much, Aunt Mel. You were so right. I'm not going to be a sociology major, and I am not going to Columbia. I just kind of got a little swept up with Evita, but I'm so done with her. I just want to stay right here with you. Oh, maybe later we could go get our nails done. Okay. Oh, I'm so lucky to have you. <laughs> Joe is a magician. <laughs> Felicia, we meet again. Oh, I'm a little bit early. Is Danny ready? Yeah, um, look. I know it's not my place, but I think you're making a huge mistake taking Danny away from a wonderful father. For the past 48 hours, Joe has been teaching her pretty much everything he knows. She is going to be prepared for whatever life throws at her. I'm not changing my mind, Mel. Your hair looks really nice. <laughs> really nice. Are you hitting on me? <laughs> They're in the kitchen. That's why you never use a debit card at the gas station, honey. Or the bathroom. Can you, um... Just give them one more minute. I'm sorry if I was snippy, but instead of survival lessons, I wanted to have fun with you before I left. I don't know. I was just scared that when, you know, your mom took you home, I wasn't going to be able to see you again. Why wouldn't you get to see me again? You're my father. Yeah, but it's not up to me. You're really worried about that? I'm scared to death I'm not going to see you again. There's something that might help you survive. Dad, that's not gonna happen. And I promise, I'll diversify my assets and never have more than 20% in international stocks. That's my girl. Danny, your mom is here. Mom, hi! Hey. So, I guess, uh, you're gonna take Danny home, huh? Uh, not necessarily. What do you mean, not necessarily? When I said that I was taking Danny home, I didn't mean immediately. You said 48 hours. Well, I didn't say when they would start. You were counting down. <laughs> take yes for an answer. I... Right. Hey, so, just so I'm clear, does this mean that we're going back to the original deal? She can stay here for three more months? Yes. The original deal. So, uh, stay for dinner. Uh, Joe and Danny made a lasagna last night at midnight. I'll just throw it in the microwave. What? No! Oh! You don't microwave lasagna? What she said! Actually, I'm gonna get back on the road to Fort Wayne. I... What about the tour? I, I quit the tour. So you're gonna be home all alone? <sighs> don't worry about me. I've been alone before. You just listen to your dad, and I want you to call me and... Any time. It's nothing. It's, it's just my allergies. But I am totally fine. I'm going to fix my face, and then I'm just going to... I'm going to get on the road. I'm going to go look after Felicia. And by look after her, I mean I'm going to make sure she doesn't cry mascara all over my couch. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to be home alone. My mom would never admit it, but she'll be really lonely. Besides, it's like we've been partners for 13 years. I kind of miss her. Don't tell her that. <laughs> Your secret's safe with me. So, if it's cool with you, can I go home with her? Yeah. Yep. Because, you know, we're going to... We're gonna see each other again soon. Yeah, like spring break. Hey, yes, you know what? We could go on that camping trip then if you want. Or I could just hang here. You know, play poker and break each other's elbows. Ooh. <laughs> I'd like that. Bye, Danny. Bye, Felicia. I love you, Danny. Call me when you get home, okay? Hey, and remember, never buy milk at liquor stores. <laughs> How are things with uh, you and Lennox? Oh, you're never gonna believe this, but the advice you gave me totally worked. Why would I not believe that? It was my advice. 
Not only are Lennox and I on good terms, but she canceled that stupid trip to Columbia. I don't know how to thank you. Yeah, you do. Tell me how. Well, first, you're gonna rinse your dishes off every time before you put them in the dishwasher. Oh, man! You wanna go upstairs? I do. I think we deserve some fun time after all that hardcore parenting. Ooh, yes, we do. You know what? I'm gonna grab a bottle of wine from the kitchen. No, 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 I got one under the bed. And in the hamper. And in the nightstand. What? I'm always ready for romance. How much alcohol do you need to have sex with me? <laughs> Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. It's my money, and I'm gonna use it how I want. Look, man, I'm not judging. I'm just saying that what you want to do with it is incredibly stupid. Which is your opinion? As a businessman. Who makes my lunch? Don't you go there, boy. You really want to mess with the guy who decides what goes in your sandwich? All right, you two, what's going on here? There is no arguing in this house. But Joe... All right, shut it. Come on, seriously. Joe doesn't approve of the way I'm investing my thousand dollars that I inherited from Great Aunt Florence. No, that's not what I said. Okay, what I said was it would simply save time to soak the check in gasoline and then set it on fire. I found this amazing new company and their stock goes on sale tomorrow. Initial public offerings are always risky, dude. It's my thousand dollars. Yep, not for long. So what's the company? Uh, Jump Tech. They invented these sneakers that make you jump higher. Magic flying shoes. Quick, Mel, mortgage the house. We can get in on this surefire thing. It's not magic. Check this out. See? Fat guys and short kids wearing the shoes, and they're jumping over fences and slam dunking. How? Finally, science has given us something we can use. Well, you know, it does use patented hypercoil technology, which is either really good or totally made up. It's my money, and I'm not going to miss out on this. I just have to figure out a way to open up a brokerage account by tomorrow. Fine. I will help you lose your money, all right? I'll buy the stock through my account. Yes, I still have an account, all right? Currently, it's more of a pity account, but I still have one. Oh, this is great, Joe. Now you'll get to feel what it's like to touch money again. Trust me, it's nice. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Hey, Lennox. Hey, guess what I learned in school today? Boys suck. As a man who was once a boy, I am so happy that you figured that out. Well, what happened, sweetie? Haskell and I were supposed to meet up at the yogurt shop at 6 to celebrate our two-week anniversary. I get there a little early, and he's in the parking lot making out with that skank, Marissa, near the dumpster. That was our spot. I mean, can you believe that? Well, yeah, Marissa's smoking hot. Uh, like a pile of duty in August. Good save. Ugh, oh, honey, that's terrible, you know? When I was your age and something like that would happen to me, I would grab my fake ID, sneak into a bar, and drown my sorrows in a big frosty mug of milk. <laughs> Look, it's Haskell's loss. I never want to hear that name again. It is now the H word. Okay, on a totally different subject, have you decided what you're gonna do with your thousand dollars from Aunt Florence? Yes. I'm going to get an anatomically correct Haskell voodoo doll. <laughs> I hope a lot better investment than writers. It's all good, all good. It's okay, okay. It's all right, all right. As far as I can see, it's all good, all good. It's okay, okay. It's all right, all right. I guess you're stuck with me. Mel? I mean, um, H Word's dad. Ah, listen, I feel terrible about how my son ended things with Lennox. Yeah, how's she doing? Um, you know, she's going through a wide range of emotions. One minute she's devastated, and the next minute she's perfectly miserable. Actually, it's sort of a narrow range of emotion. Wow, that must be really hard. I can barely stand to be in the same room with her. Oh, you meant for Lennox. Wow, you got a little evil streak there, don't you? What do you mean? It's not little. Good to know. Seriously, though, I thought Lennox and Haskell made a really cute couple. Yeah. You know, right up until the moment when he started making out with someone else. Well, in that area, he takes after his mother. <laughs> which is why we're no longer together. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear you're available. Hey, you know, with the whole Lennox Haskell thing, I probably shouldn't even be talking to you. Oh, yeah, you know, we are in enemy camps now. Mm -hmm. you, you. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's no chance of me asking you out. Ah, uh, absolutely not. <laughs> 
In fact, I dare you. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Joe, you notice anything weird about this glass? Yeah, you're holding it, and, um, doesn't smell like gin. All the glasses coming out of the dishwasher lately have been cloudy. You walked all the way in here to tell me about a cloudy glass? All the glasses, they all have spots in them. What are you gonna do about this? Hide when I hear your footsteps. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to pretend like that's a serious problem? Mel, I'm gonna get right on this. <laughs> Joe, you were right about jump tech. It didn't double its first day. Well, I'm sorry, buddy. This is one of those times I wish I wasn't right. It tripled. Check it out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm rich. My stock is worth three grand. Thanks, Joe. I, I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, it was, it was all you, man. I, <laughs> I did nothing. Nice going, Joe. I didn't buy the stock. What? I didn't buy it. But, well, can you call them and tell them you meant to buy it? Sure. Yeah, because the stock market is all about the honor system. But you told Ryder that you bought it. Yeah, well, it was a sure loser. So you lied to him? No, I didn't lie to him. I was protecting him. From what? Wealth? Hey, look, this is a stupid company with an inane concept. There's no logical reason for it to have gone up. Wow, I feel really terrible for Ryder, but I'm so glad I'm not you. Go ahead, laugh all you want, all right? When Sanity returns to the Earth tomorrow and the stock crashes, he's gonna thank me for saving his thousand bucks. Hey, Lennox! Oh, funniest thing happened today. I ran into Haskell's dad getting coffee. Oh, that's nice. Did you tell him I hope his son falls lips first into a wood chipper? <laughs> well, not in those exact words. Yeah, we, uh, there was something else I wanted to mention. Um. Well, Haskell's dad and I were thinking about, just want to throw this out there, you know, going to get a meal sometime, like dinner time. <laughs> dinner? That's a date. You can't do that. Well, if you want to think about it, let me know how you feel. <laughs> I can't believe you do this to me. That's like treason. Pick a family at Mel Haskell's or ours. Wow, I really feel terrible for Lennox. So glad I'm not you. <laughs> Talk about an overreaction. She's absolutely right. What you did was total and utter betrayal. I mean, it's not like I'm dating a friend's ex, which I would never do again. <laughs> it was in high school. College. Oh, drop it. <laughs> it's not like Haskell is a serious boyfriend like Aiden was, you know? Haskell's just a two-week rebound guy. No, they're teenagers, all right? Two weeks in their world is like 20,000... You know, text messages. But this is Haskell's dad, and the sins of the son shall not be visited upon the fathers. You know, especially the super cute ones. Mel, well, you know this parenting thing we're trying to do here? It involves a little bit of sacrifice. Does it involve anything else? I'm just saying, you know, for the health of the household, you might just want to keep it in your pants. But Sam didn't do anything. I mean, why should he have to suffer and not have a chance to get with? Yes. All right, I'll do the right thing. <laughs> Mel, you didn't have to wait for me out here. Yeah, I did. I just didn't want to get started on the whole dinner because... What's up? Well, I'm sorry, but Lennox is not a big fan of us going out together. Oh, I see. So you're saying we're gonna have to sneak around? <laughs> no, I would never. That would be wrong. Well, then, uh, I guess this is goodbye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we can sneak around. Read this and pretend to read this. Oh, and remember today you have that lunch with the oldest woman in Toledo. Oh, you're gonna have to postpone it. She's 106. Well, it'll give her something to live for. I'm sorry, I have an urgent personal conflict. Personal? What's his name? Stephanie, when I say something's personal, it means I don't want to discuss Sam. His name's Sam. Haskell's dad? We're not supposed to talk to him. I'm Facebook friends with Lennox. That's why I'm seeing him secretly. Oh, spill it, naughty girl. Just call me a... Yeah, I am a naughty girl. Okay, so, last night, we went to this skeevy dive bar. You know, the kind of place I would never go to that much anymore. It was so exciting, you know? It was like I was 18 again and dating my dad's tennis pro. Don't worry, I'll cancel your lunch. I'll clear your whole afternoon. Exactly how much time do you need? Just lunch. Yeah, I can get a lot done in an hour. <laughs> Hey, Ryder, how's your investment doing today? Uh, bad day. 
It only doubled. I am so rich. The funny thing is, is no matter how rich you get, you're still a geek. Oh, the ladies loves the rich geeks. Hey, maybe you can use some of that money and buy yourself a clue. You know, Ryder, um, you know what this means, right? I mean, you're only rich on paper. This stock could still drop like a stone. I never thought of that. Yeah. We gotta cash in. Call your guy and tell him to sell now. Yeah, Joe, why don't you do that? What? No, 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 no. What? No, 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 no. We can't, we can't pull out all of a sudden. Why not? Why, dude? Because we need to think about this, man. But you hate this stuff. Yes, I do, buddy, with all my soul. But, um, you know, emotions never factor into a financial decision. No, no, what we need to do is stay the course and, uh, you know, just play this, this whole thing out. You're right. I mean, it could double again tomorrow. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I am so glad I'm in business with you, Joe. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for not ratting me out. Well, you know, nobody's perfect. I, I don't judge anyone. Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's pretty much all you do. <laughs> hey, Mel, it's the middle of the day. What are you doing home? What are you doing home? Every Thursday, you jog the towpath trail at exactly this time. OK. <laughs> Number one, I don't jog, I run, okay? And number two... Okay, I don't want to hear about your number twos. Um, <clears throat> you know, the kids are in school. Why don't you just take the day off? Here, here's $10. What are you talking about? I'm fixing the dishwasher, remember? Cloudy glasses, end of the world. Uh, a few spots isn't going to kill anybody. Uh, just go for your run. Here, here's another 10. You're acting all weird. What are you doing? I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on here. Okay, um, Sam Davis is coming over. Here? Why? <gasps> no. Oh, grow up. Wait a minute. You promised Lennox you would not get involved. I, I tried, but then he kissed me. You know, now I have no choice but to have sneaky secret sex with him. And today we're doing it here. We're going to pretend my room is my parents' room. Oh, my God. You are such a hypocrite. I am not. Yes, you are. You told Lennox you wouldn't get involved with Haskell's dad. You lied to her. Don't act all high and mighty. You lied to Ryder. Hey, I lied to Ryder to protect him, all right? You lied to Lennox to cover your own butt. Oh, bravo. You're a much more ethical liar than I am. I'm sure when we meet in hell, you know, my flames will be on high and yours will only be on simmer. Can you just skedaddle so I can get some in the privacy of my own home? Fine. You know what? I'm going, but I'm not lying for you. Oh, hey, Joe. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Come on, he was just leaving. Give me a five-minute head start before you guys do anything. Hey, Joe. Hey, Lennox. Lennox! Hey, what the heck are you doing here? Why aren't you at school? I left my history paper in the printer, and it's due fifth period. Wait, 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 wait. Where, where are you going to be going? To get my paper. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. No, you can't go upstairs right now. I'm cleaning up there. Trust me. You, there's a lot of stuff probably hanging out. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to see what's going on up there. I'll avert my eyes. Well, wait a minute, Lennox. Lennox. Lennox, please. You def, you, I, I wouldn't go up the back stairs to the second floor, Lennox, where you're probably more than halfway by now. <laughs> You guys owe me big time. For what? We didn't even get to the good stuff. Nice to see you again. Get out of here, will you? Jeez, what was that? Oh, that? That was just the door. I'm going around the house, checking all these doors, making sure they're not squeaking. This one's good. Where are you, go where are you going? Back to school? Yeah, but you, 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 you came in the back door. And I want to go out the front door. Mm -mm, nope, you cannot do that. Nope, it's bad luck. It's bad luck. You have to, you have to go out the same door you came in. Okay, that's just common freaking sense, Lennox. Okay, I'm coming. All right. In a crisis, you want Mongo. <laughs> Doing today. Oh, it's a piece of crap. Wow, the price of crap is skyrocketing. I know. This company continues to defy all logic. It just keeps going up and up and up. It's like, uh, it's like, um. A jump tech sneaker? <laughs> Give me a little text message from your, um, sneaky secret boyfriend? No. A text message has words. <laughs> Sending you pictures? That's classy. How do you even get one of us doing that? I mean, it's not like he has any hands free. And my breakfast is done. Oh, relax, Longo. We were just dancing. Naked. Oh, come on. It's just... I, I'm joking. Look, what politician would be dumb enough to have naked pictures on their cell phone? Let me ask you something, Burke. Why is it that um, I lie to Ryder and I feel awful, yet you lie to Lennox and you're having the time of your life? 
Oh, wait a minute. I forgot it's because I have a conscience. I don't feel bad because what Lennox doesn't know doesn't hurt her. You made Ryder believe he was rich. You know what? You're right. But I can fix that because I still have his original $1,000. Well, you're not going to buy that ridiculous stock, are you? Are you crazy? No, I would never do anything that risky. I'm going to invest it in a high-stakes poker game. <laughs> Is there anything you need to tell me? Mm, oh, stay in school. Don't drink and drive. And always put the toilet seat down. Oh, wait, that's for Ryder. <laughs> that's funny, because I just heard today that Haskell's father was sneaking around with... Oh, who was that again? Oh, that's right, you. <laughs> that is a vicious rumor. Is it true? Well, I don't see why that's important. <laughs> I was having lunch with Haskell today, and he said he just found out. And Mel, how could you? Lennox, I'm so sorry. I didn't... Wait. You're speaking to Haskell again? Yeah, yeah. We sorted stuff out a couple days ago. Turns out he doesn't like Marissa. She just jumped up in the parking lot. And I mean, what was he supposed to do? Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't change the subject. You lied to me. No, 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 no. I think I'm in the clear here. What? Yeah, my lie was only a lie because you weren't speaking to Haskell. Now that you're speaking to him again, you've removed my lie. See, my lie is now the truth. <laughs> Are you even listening to yourself? Yes, I am, and I like what I hear. A lie is a lie. A lie is based on its context. Oh, clearly you're the expert on lying. OK, maybe you weren't listening, but you've removed my lie. And I'm putting it back, liar. Oh! Oh! You just smell the crazy in here. Good to see you're back in the game, Longo. Good to be back, Jackson. I raised 500. Call. 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 So where's your stake come from these days? I'm not going to lie to you, man. From the uh, kid that I babysit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, all right, gentlemen. Let's see who at this table has actually got a pair. I raise 1,000. I'm out. I think I can cover your 1,000. I'm all in. What's it going to be, Joe? That 6,000 calling your name? I'm thinking. So you going all in or what? Yeah. Yeah, I am definitely going to go up. I'm sorry. Would you guys mind if I just take that for a minute? I'm, Hello, I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> Hello? Joe, we're ruined. You know those jump tech videos of those kids slam dunking? They are all fakes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Calm down. Who said that they were fake? The president of the company. As the FBI held them away in handcuffs. <laughs> I'm out, guys. This game's too hot for me. <laughs> well, look at us. Right out here in the open.
date tonight? Yeah, it's funny, you know. Once we compared parking spaces, the night kind of peaked. Uh, I don't know, without sneaking around behind people's back, the thing with Sam kind of lost its thrill. <laughs> Pretty messed up, huh? You say that like it's news. <laughs> what is it about people always wanting to do things they're not supposed to do? You know, Mel, it's human nature. I mean, um, people can't help themselves, you know? I mean, you, you start feeling something that, uh, you know, you think maybe you shouldn't, and then pull is too strong. Well, maybe the pull is too strong because it's against the rules. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If um, the only thing that makes a relationship exciting is that it's forbidden, Probably not worth it. No, it's probably totally hot. <laughs> Congratulations on turning 106, Mrs. McKinnon. As your city councilwoman, I, Mel Burke, value contact with my constituents, especially someone with as much life experience as you have. <coughs> Uh, excuse me, do you have a cough drop or maybe a hard candy in your purse? Thanks for covering. <laughs> and as your councilwoman, Mel Burke, I think there's so much you could teach us all about the real values in life, you know, like integrity and honesty. Thank you, dear. Thanks to both of you. <laughs> what? What do, what do you mean? Oh, drop it. <laughs> I didn't get to be 106 without paying attention. <laughs> Marco and Lennox have been sneaking around. My own nephew, he lied to me. My niece lied to me, too. How come I'm not freaking out? I don't know. Painkillers? <laughs> Built up a tolerance to those years ago. Hours ago. <laughs> It's different, okay? Marco made Lennox lie to you. Made her? What, has he got some kind of hold on her? Yes, honey, I keep telling you, all right? You are underestimating the power of a male with Longo blood. <laughs> We'd get a warrant to do anything. Anything. <laughs> the powers are limitless. Can you open the door here, please? Okay. Yeah. I, know, I just think we should enjoy the beautiful night sky until your urge to murder passes. Babe, I'm telling you. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna be under control. I'm not even gonna raise my voice. Trust me. Okay. I didn't bring my keys. Grab mine, they're in my pocket. Yeah, I don't think your keys are in here. I'm sorry, I meant the other pocket. So you were just gonna let me feel around in there all day? I was. <laughs> Get in there. Cool and calm? Yo, cool and calm. Now I'm going to finish the other half. <laughs> Calmly. It's all good. All good. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. All right. As far as I can see. It's all good. All good. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. All right. I guess you're stuck with me. I cannot believe my own nephew lied to my face. What, do you think I wasn't gonna find out? I got one question for you, Marco, just one. Do you think I'm stupid, or are you stupid? I'm not stupid. That's two questions. <laughs> it's two, two questions. <laughs> okay, come on, Marco. We don't have to listen to this. Actually, you do. Actually, they don't, they're adults. Hey, just because you're adults doesn't mean it's right to lie to my face. You wanna punch me? Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, no, hitting him isn't gonna change the way I feel about him. I know that, but I would feel better. Joe, hitting doesn't solve anything, right? All right, fine, fine, no one's gonna hit anyone. Marco knows what he was doing was wrong, otherwise, why would he be keeping it a secret? 
I'm the one who wanted to keep it a secret. I wasn't sure about us, but now I am. Aww. Hold on. <laughs> this is this is not an awe. It's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know. It's pretty close. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I know you think I'm just a move from Jersey and she's out of my league, but there is nothing you can do to hold back true like. <laughs> See how I didn't say love? I know you want to take this thing slow, and I respect that. I don't get it. What could you two possibly have in common? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, why don't you guys give me and Joe a minute? Okay. I'm just relieved this is out in the open. Come on, Marco. We'll be up in my room. Keep your door open. I mean, close it. I mean, I don't know what I want. Joe, I think you handled that as well as you could. Yeah, it's a big victory. Lennox is upstairs in her bedroom right now with a player. Lennox is a grown woman. She's gonna do what she wants to do. Wow. I'm powerless. I am completely powerless. These guns, they... <laughs> they have no firing pin. Oh, you're back. Listen, this boy asked me out on a date tomorrow night. I won't be too late. You see that? First week at a new school and Danny's already making friends. Isn't that great? It's awesome. You're not going. But I already said yes. Oh, oh, you already said yes? Oh, well, no, in that case, you're not going. Why? Why? You want a reason? All right, look, I, I actually have a very good one. Now, look, it's, it's, it's a little complicated, but um, here it is. Cause I said so. Oh, you're such a dictator! <laughs> wow, first Lennox is mad at you, now Danny. I'm sorry, Joe. You kidding? That felt great. <laughs> Firing pin is coming back. Hey, look at this. The monster truck rally's in town. Ugh, can you imagine people actually go to that crap? Did I mention I welded the cage to the crush mobile at the Northeast Monster Truck Orama? And we won most bodacious. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure there's tons of things we can find to do together. Hmm. Hey, Amelia just asked if I could go to the movies with her tonight. Can you take me? Oh, happy to. Yeah, now that I got my cast off, that's the kind of wonderful thing I can do. I can also do this. <laughs> wow, now you're not just cool Aunt Mel, you're cool stepmom Mel. I am. I need to update my Twitter bio. <laughs> You are much cooler than Joe. I know, but don't tell him. He can't handle the truth. <laughs> That's a reference? Never mind. Hey, I bet there's tons of movies that we could see. Oh, yeah, of course there are. Oh, I really want to see this French film, La Tristesse de ma mère. It means the sadness of my mother. If his mother's a robot, I'm in. <laughs> but you know what I hear is also cool? Zeke the talking donkey. Check out the ad. Zeke, the dirtiest ass in Cleveland. Get it? I wish it didn't. Oh, okay. Maybe we should just give up, huh? What? No, 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 no. Hold on. Um, how about how about this one? Hang the Iron Lantern. It's a documentary about a local sculptor, Thorndike Wells. He makes art, which I like, and his sculptures are made of metal, which you, as a welder, would enjoy. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Are you lying? Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, if you're interested, I'm interested. But if that art movie sold out, the donkey movie, 3D. So when Zeke burps, your hair blows back. Thorndike Wells is such a genius. I mean, to spend three years working on that one sculpture? I don't know what he was doing all that time. Me and my boys could have that thing knocked out in a weekend. No, he was creating something of incredible symbolic complexity. Whatever. The welds sucked. Drippy, uneven. He is not getting into the union with sloppy work like that. <laughs> hey, Lennox. Xander. Uh, you know Marco. Yeah, we've met. 
So, uh, that's new. Oh, yeah. Well, after you broke up with me, my roommates thought it wise to hide all the razor blades. So, voila. So the movie, was that incredible or what? Yeah, I'm Thorndike Wells is a genius. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be signing copies of his book in the lobby. I know. I'm actually working up the courage to reintroduce myself to him. I had an interview with him last week uh, to be an intern in his art studio. Excuse me, I'm going to go make some art in the men's room. <laughs> if I run into Thorndike, I'll tell him what's wrong with his welds. <laughs> it's a good plan. I'm sure he'll love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you two are a... Uh, Officially going out, huh? We are. Good. Good. <laughs> Question. Question. Um, when you take him to a movie like this, do you have to explain it to him in like little tiny words? It's not nice to talk behind someone's back. No, I know, but you know, if I said it to his face, he'd, he'd punch me. Hey, Danny, great. I thought your dad wouldn't let you come out on a date. My dad has no idea. Luckily, my stepmom's easy to scam. Joaquin and Dash are getting us some popcorn. They'll be right back. Oh, hiya. What are you doing here? You were just supposed to drop me off. Oh, well, I saw the poster. I didn't know this was a Zeke movie. I love that talking donkey. You know, he really speaks his mind. Um, anyway, if it's awkward for your girlfriends to see me, I can sit a few rows back. Oh, it's... That was weird. A totally random boy just handed me popcorn for absolutely no reason. Is this a date? No! It's a double date. Thanks! Don't tell Joe. He can't handle the truth. Did I say it right? <laughs> Danny, your dad told you no dating. Yeah, but clearly that ship has sailed. I can't leave you here with these boys. That would be like lying to Joe. I've done it. It's not that hard. <laughs> Joe and I are a team. I can't go behind his back. But what about me? It'll be totally embarrassing if I just leave. Come on, you were 13 once. Not that long ago. Uh-huh, yeah, like I'm gonna fall for that. How long ago do you think? <laughs> My stepmom drags me out of here. The humiliating photos will be all over the internet before I leave the lobby. My life at my new school will be totally ruined. Okay, but Joe never finds out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'll wait for you in the lobby. But when this movie gets out, you are getting a hickey check. What's a hickey? <laughs> nice try. Good morning. Hey. Danny must be uh, pretty mad at me. Kids, huh? Yeah, well, she didn't even say goodnight to me. You guys got home from the movies last night. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, her dad says she can't date, and all of a sudden, I'm a monster. That's the price you pay for being a tough parent. Yep, yep, yep. I gotta tell you, honey, it really means the world to me that you have my back on this one, because now I know you and I are truly teammates. Yep, yep, yep. And I just want to apologize in advance, because in about a minute, Danny's gonna come bounding down those stairs, and she's gonna be throwing a whole bunch of teenage attitude our way. Good morning, everyone. Did you see the sky outside? Oh, it's so beautiful. It's like a screensaver. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> Hey, kiddo. How did uh, you and the girls enjoy the uh, talking donkey movie? Oh, so stupid. I loved it. <laughs> wow. You see what I did? What? I just parented the crap out of her. You know, Mel confirms what I always thought. Even with kids today, a good old-fashioned dose of vitamin N still works. Vitamin N? Yeah, the word no. Administer as needed. <laughs> A pie, teammate. Yep, yep, yep. Hey. Hey. So, here are this week's drawings for Cassandra. Oh, great, thanks. Uh, you know, I'm glad that even though we broke up, we can work together on our web series. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know who else I might be working with pretty soon? I can only tell you his initials. It's renowned American sculptor Thorndike Wells. <laughs> Wait, you got the internship? Well, no, not quite. It's uh, it's down to me and one other guy. Oh, well, there's no way that other dwarf is one-tenth as talented as you. You're totally getting this internship. Well, you can't be too sure, especially since the other dwarf is me. What? Excuse me, what? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> After the screening, I wound up standing beside Thorndike at the urinals. 
I told him what I thought of his lame pipe. <laughs> then I clarified and explained I was referring to his shoddy welds. <laughs> okay, uh, so, uh, the other guy's you. But you're, um, you're... Someone Mr. Wells said he could learn a lot from. I gotta go call my mom. She's gonna be so proud. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I can't believe he's doing this to me. Xander, he's not doing anything to you. Are you blind, Lennox? Your boyfriend is totally screwing both of us. <laughs> In very different ways. If you guys don't need any more help, I have some extra credit homework I'm gonna get to. Oh, yeah, we can take care of the rest. You are excused. Amazing, huh? I mean, from a single seat of discipline comes an entire forest of good behavior. <laughs> and we thought we were gonna have trouble with that one. Oh, boy, were we wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, honey, I think this parenting victory calls for a little celebration. Yesterday, when I was at the hardware store, I bought a, a party bulb off the impulse rack. It's in my nightstand. Why don't you, um... Uh... Run upstairs and flip it on? Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, Dan, you left your phone on the table, sweetie. Can't wait for our next double date. Thank your cool stepmom for making it possible. Joaquin. <laughs> Dead man Joaquin. <laughs> Ice and frozen yogurt. Why do you want to work for Thorndike Wells? Some girls would just say, I'm so lucky to have a boyfriend who brings me frozen treats. I just, I can't figure it out. Why all of a sudden someone who has no interest in art wants so badly to work for this artist? It doesn't matter anymore. Gallery just texted me, Xander got the job. You were right. I couldn't compete with an actual artist. Wow. You really wanted that job, but how come? I mean, you'd be a glorified gopher and you're not even interested yeah, in art. but you are. And then maybe we'd have a little more in common. Besides that. <laughs> I wasn't sure if your motives were pure. Turns out your motives were awesome. It really doesn't bother you that our interests are so different? No, of course not. And I bet with time I could learn to love monster trucks. Really? Yes. Are you lying? Yes. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting you at all, but now that you're here... Mel, no, before we go any further... Oh, right, I almost forgot. Janelle in zoning got really into Fifty Shades of Grey, and now she wants everyone to be as twisted as she is. And I think it would be rude not to use her secret Santa gift. Listen, honey, I appreciate all the trouble that you went to, but um, we really need to talk. Oh, right. We cannot go any further without a safe word. How about, um, how about stepmom? Or maybe uh, double date? Or, oh, wait a minute, here's my favorite. My wife lied to me. This does not sound like foreplay. I told Danny she couldn't date, and you took her out to meet a boy? Okay, look, it all started very innocently. I was trapped, you know, handcuffed, if you will. And speaking of which, what's in here? Stop it, all right? Don't distract me with your accessories, okay? And you know what? Will you take that silly mask off, please? Because I feel like I'm being hit on by Batman. Okay, look. I didn't know that there was going to be a boy there until after we got there. Besides, it was just a movie. Just a movie? Half my neighborhood would conceive during just a movie. So if I dragged her out of there in front of her friends, she would have been humiliated. You were 13 once. Not as recently as me, but... Mel, we are husband and wife. We are teammates. I understand you had to make a tough call in the heat of the moment, but why didn't you tell me afterwards? There was a very good reason. Well? Look, you know how Lennox and Marco didn't come to you when they started dating? Because they know it was wrong. Or maybe they were worried about how you'd react. I reacted fine. No one got hit. Joe, I would love it if we could set the bar a little higher than no one got hit. Hey, hey, what does Marco and Lennox have to do with us anyway? <sighs> okay. Now, 
If I tell you this, you promise you won't fly off the handle. Oh. Yes, honey, come on. You can tell me anything. Here goes. Joe, mm -hmm. you're not always that easy to talk to. Me? What? <laughs> that is insane. Really important for me to hear. I do that a lot? What's a lot? Yeah, constantly. So people are afraid to tell me things because of how I might react. That explains a lot. What? When I was a kid and my mom told me there was no Santa Claus, she had my Uncle Sal there. The cop. It was a good call. I didn't take it well. Well, Joe, I still love you. All of you, you know, even the overreacting, angry parts. It's not all anger, Mel. A lot of it is, um, fear, actually. I was afraid Lennox was gonna get hurt and there was nothing I could do about it. Danny's even younger than that, and I gotta tell you... You were worried she'd get hurt? No, I'm worried I'm gonna be a grandfather. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know that my... Parental concern can look a little scary at times. You're welcome. And I should have come straight out and told you what I did for Danny. So wait a minute. In other words, you were, um... Really? You're gonna make me say it? I'm just saying, you know, you went to all this trouble for a romantic evening. This could really get the night going. I was... Mm -hmm. wrong. Oh, God, that does it to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So wrong. Mm -hmm. Mistaken. Yeah. Incorrect. I am not withholding anything from you tonight. <laughs> so, I start tomorrow as Thorndike's new intern. You know, answering phone calls, running errands, plunging the occasional toilet. <laughs> Doesn't sound very glamorous, but I'm really excited. Well, I'm sure you'll be working side by side with him in his studio in no time. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, he made it very clear nobody touches the art but Mr. Wells. Hey, guys. Hey, oh, Hey. Hey, you know, sorry about that job. Better luck next time, right? Yeah, maybe it just wasn't the job for you, but I know there will be other opportunities that fit you perfectly. That is exactly what Thorndike said when he told me I wasn't going to get that gopher job. <laughs> but then a funny thing happened. He just called and asked if I want to help out in his studio pouring metal and doing the welding. I'm going to be his new apprentice. You're, you're gonna touch the art? You're just gonna do that? His exact words were, Marco, I want you by my side as I create. Well, didn't this just work out great for everybody? <laughs>